I have lived here since 1965. My husband and I moved here in May of that year. And we had three children at the time and there were only two bedrooms in the house. My dad's dream was to have this little piece of property here in Sonoma County. And the property here is about two acres. It was mostly apples when we came here, but as some of you know about Sonoma County, it has grape growing. Mom was my dad's partner in helping to keep up the property, um, and it, it was a lot of property, and it's been a lot for her as she's gotten older. There you go, Lisa. I do all the gardening that I need to, and more than anybody wants me to do. I am able to do the Kubota tractor and drive it around, and I do the riding lawnmower, and I do some other things that I won't mention because my kids will get angry. Uh, that's about it. I think initially, because she downplays everything, and it's hard to tell, so I think none of us realized quite how serious it was. She'd be doing something, and then all of a sudden, she'd sit down and just say, I need to rest. She'd downplay it. And when we did a girls' trip to Monterey, mm -hmm. um, it was the first time I really noticed it. And I think that's when it really hit home for me. My name is Georgia, and I have mitral valve regurgitation. So the question is, what is mitral regurgitation? So actually one of the most common heart valve ailments as people age is leaking heart valves. And in particular, one of the valves in the heart called the mitral valve. Now this is a special valve that has two what we call leaflets that open and close. So there's a front and a back. Um, and if the leaflets don't meet properly, there can be a leaking of blood backwards and this, this blood leaks backwards into uh, a, an upper chamber that's connected to the lungs. So people can almost feel like they're suffocating or drowning when they have severe leaking. They're short of breath, just walking short distances. I was not aware of any risk factors for heart disease in my family. My dad lived to be 94 and all he had was some high blood pressure. My mother lived to be 99 and a half and we expected her to live to 100 but she didn't quite make it. So I didn't have any idea that I would have heart problems. But I did, and the shortness of breath is what drove me to the doctor. There are different ways that the mitral valve can leak. Uh, one way, which is called degenerative mitral regurgitation, is where actually the leaflets themselves are somehow billowing or not meeting properly because there's excess tissue. The other type of mitral regurgitation is called uh, functional mitral regurgitation, also called secondary. Uh, and this is for people in whom the heart muscle has weakened for some reason. And because the valve is attached to the heart muscle, it can be pulled apart. So there's not really anything wrong with the valve leaflets, but the heart muscle uh, begins to fail, and this creates uh, the leaking. I was 59 years old when I was first diagnosed with uh, mitral valve regurgitation. I was on a regimen of medication for about 10 years, and the symptoms that I had were shortness of breath. There are many reasons for patients to be short of breath. There's a whole series of basic evaluations that can be performed. But if, if your doctor hears a significant heart murmur or a kind of whooshing sound in your chest and other tests lead to mitral regurgitation as being the possibility, 
uh, then it would be appropriate to be seen by a cardiologist for further uh, evaluation. The doctor sent me to a cardiologist at that time who put me on medications. But then things got worse as I became 69 and he suggested a pacemaker. So I had that put in. I think we all started to worry that her, the days were numbered and we were concerned because she was getting tired much more often, going to bed earlier, didn't have the energy. She always had a great attitude, but was slowing down. I took a trip to Denver with a friend in 2011. We made the train trip and after that, I kind of deteriorated quite a bit. I lost weight and it was, had just been too much for my heart at that point. If mitral regurgitation is not treated and is allowed to continue for, for years, uh, what can happen is the heart muscle can progressively weaken. Patients develop what we call advanced heart failure. They can develop irregular heart rhythms and become extremely symptomatic uh, and short of breath, often just sitting in a chair and requiring oxygen. My health declined greatly and uh, my doctor recommended that I go down to Stanford and have additional examinations. And after they examined me, they thought that I would not withstand a valve replacement. And they did suggest an LVAD. Mom's diagnosis was very shocking for me. I was also really shocked by the diagnosis and incredibly saddened um, and um, didn't want it to be true. I don't know how to describe it. It was really, really hard, the thought that our time would be so limited. Family's always been number one for mom, and we would always be there for her no matter what, and that's just how it's always been. Mom's pretty amazing, so it's not just because she's our mom, it's because she's like the most amazing person on the whole planet. My family got together and Christine paid for a house out at Bodega Bay and we invited all the women in the family to come and friends and they would say goodbye to me. The gathering organized in Bodega was originally to be a farewell to mom, knowing that she didn't have much time left. Christine had these sweatshirts made. We all wore them, and they represent mom. The piano, her ducks, little Lulu, her dog, um, all sorts of little detail in there. Mom was, is such a fabulous mentor to me and my sisters and so many other people. And so we had this party in Bodega originally as a chance for these friends that have been here throughout her life and all of us to come together and have a chance to say goodbye to her. And it ended up turning into a celebration. Okay, come on, Lou, come on, let's go. When I was let's told go. I had a short time to live, come on. it made me very sad because I can't really think about it. I would have missed all the grandchildren graduating. I'm sorry. I'll try that again. I had not met Dr. Rogers until my cardiologist in Santa Rosa suggested I might be a candidate for a mitral valve clip. So a procedure that we perform commonly now is called transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair or TIR. Uh, but this is a procedure where a, a small catheter or tube is placed through uh, the patient's femoral vein uh, in the right leg. And this is uh, brought up to the heart while the patient is asleep. And we can implant a small clip to bring the leaflets back together. So it's like a small clothespin that sort of brings the leaflets back together to reduce or eliminate the leaking. Um, this procedure can be performed on um, elderly patients who are at very high risk for surgery, 
or even younger patients if they're appropriately selected. And the advantage really is that it's minimally invasive and patients mostly go home the next day. They're walking later uh, the same day of the procedure and can go home the next day. Well, he described it very thoroughly. I don't know, but he showed me the, the machine that he would use to do it. And it was absolutely fascinating. And so I was totally unafraid and the whole family came and filled the waiting room actually when it was done. And <laughs> it turned out that it was the best thing I could have had done. So Georgia's response to the therapy was really dramatic. She was able to breathe better, resume her uh, daily activities, and really have an improved quality of life. Before the surgery, mom tired easily. And after the surgery, initially she had a couple of slow weeks while she recovered. And then all of a sudden she noticed she was doing better, she was going further, and, um, and now she's at where she is today, where she's walking, she's taking care of things on the property, and she's able to live independently. You're welcome. I am so grateful to Dr. Rogers and my own cardiologist. So this is a very exciting new field within cardiology, the ability to treat and, and fix heart valves without open surgery using small catheters. And this really represents a, a huge victory for patients, that they're able to feel better, uh, live better, and enjoy uh, their lives as they're meant to. I would hope that people, if they don't have a doctor that recommends good things, go to someone else, um, ask around, look things up, talk to people who have had a procedure, and just don't quit. Never, never give up if you're given a diagnosis that seems like it's terminal. It's the gift of time. It's the gift of having more time, more experiences, creating more memories. I, I can't, I couldn't be more grateful for this. And I love my mom to pieces and I'm looking forward to many more years.